It's been a while, but I'm back with part 6 of What If Amuro Got The Alex. And for those of you who need a refresher, I'll have parts 1 to 5 linked in the description down below and in the top comment. So now, let's see how things went in space for Shirako. In his mind, everything was going according to plan. The Federation government that he had installed in Luna 2 was under his thumb, and slowly but surely, the remaining Titans bases in space were falling under his control. However, to those around him, the situation looked significantly more dire. The Anaheim Electronics backed and Ayuk allied Axis forces were able to keep their momentum going, liberating all of Side 3, and it didn't look like Shiraka was putting up much of a fight. Quite the contrary, really. To many of his subordinates, it looked like he was more than content with running away and consolidating his rule over whatever territory still remained under his control. So slowly but surely, discontent began spreading amongst the ranks, with even rumors of ships deserting and a small rebellion breaking out on Luna 2. And on Earth, things were even worse. Not only were they the Earth's elite, led by a space noid, a space noid that looked like he was losing by the way, but the true Titans were also using this situation to their full advantage. Their attack to retake the American continent had begun, spearheaded by Jared himself, and at the same time, preparations were also being made to begin a major push into space. On Axis' side then, things seemed to be going equally smooth, with preparations being made for their next operations. After seeing Shirako's actions, the true extent of the split within the Titans had finally began to dawn on the Axis High Command, and it was decided that now was the time to push their advantage with two main attacks. One fleet would move to capture Von Braun City, after which the rest of the moon and even the rest of space was considered easy pickings, and another fleet would go directly for Earth, to not just pressure the Titans in space, but also on their home territory. The target was simple. Africa still had many Zeon troops in hiding, and even many locals were willing to support Neo Zeon in the hopes that it would lead to their independence. Both fleets would be met with unprecedented successes. Shiraco's main space fleet would move to intercept the Axis fleet en route to Von Braun, but even with he himself sortying, the battle still ended in a decisive victory for the Axis forces. While both sides were battered from the constant fighting, the difference in morale was enormous. Whereas most Axis soldiers were filled with the belief that they were fighting for the liberation of space and were still riding high from their recent successes, the Titans under Shirako were much less motivated. They had mostly been fighting against their former comrades, for reasons that many of them hardly understood, and when it came to the fights against Axis, they'd been mostly running away. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that for many soldiers, their top priority wasn't the fight, but rather to just stay alive until the inevitable order to withdraw was given. An order some ships didn't even wait for. Or worse yet, some ships decided not to engage at all. And it was a similar story with the ships sent to intercept Axis's earthbound forces. Unsure of what was going on or what Chiraco's overall plans were, they didn't feel like having their men killed for the glory of this man from Jupiter. Battles happened, with an especially fierce one with the Titans' orbital fleet, but in the end, it didn't matter. Axis forces landed in Africa. And when news of this reached Chiraco, he was furious. Given the on paper strength of his and Axis' fleets, they should have been more than evenly matched. And yet, Axis forces were now on Earth. Yet another strike against Shiraco's Titans. And worse yet, because he was suspecting the true Titans' attack on America, and because he assumed that he'd be able to stop the Axis forces in space, there were less troops in Africa than there should have been. And of course, 
This was the perfect time for anti-federation insurgents and Zion remnants to rise up and join in the battle for Africa. If Shiraco's popular support was already waning in other places on Earth, it was especially low here. Emboldened by the Neo-Zeon landing, it wouldn't be long before cities started declaring their support for Neo-Zeon, almost giving them a highway to one of Shiraco's Titans' last remaining strongholds on Earth, Kilimanjaro. This now left Shiraco with the unenviable question of where to focus his attention and which front he'd defend himself on. Kilimanjaro, the Americas, or his remaining holdings in space like Luna 2. As he was pondering this question, he got even more bad news. The attack on the peasant asteroid base was a failure. The Titan's instructor corps stationed there was fiercely pro-Earth and had absolutely zero intention of surrendering to what they essentially saw as a space noid sympathizer. And unfortunately for Shiraco, they were able to put their money where their mouth was. Using their brand new Zeku Eins mobile suits, they managed to outperform the Algesis machines and completely wiped them out. And so, Shiraco's plan to get access to their mobile suit development and production facilities were all gone too. Realizing that the tide was now seriously turning against them, it seemed like the only option left was to withdraw from Earth, hunker down on Luna 2, and hope that the true Titans and Axis would significantly weaken each other, allowing himself to once again capture the spotlight. But of course, this meant that in the meantime, those other two would be in the spotlight, and they would be sure to make the most of their time in it. When Axis arrived at the gates of the Kilimanjaro base, they mostly found demoralized and exhausted troops that put up little resistance or outright surrendered. Something that was of course the result of Shiraco's decision to focus on defending Luna 2. Most capable soldiers and mobile suits had been transferred to there, leaving Kilimanjaro with mostly its own installed stationary defenses. And while these could put a dent in the Axis onslaught, they could only halt it for so long. Kilimanjaro fell, and it wouldn't be long before most of Africa fell under Axis's theoretical sphere of influence. Rather than completely sweeping the continent, Axis only overtook major bases or cities and left the rest in the hands of the locals. On the surface, Axis had liberated Africa from the oppressive federation and boasted in their propaganda how they'd given the continent its right to self-governance back a feat that was warmly welcomed by many separatist movements that had been operating there. However, not everyone was equally pleased about the Axis takeover. Some saw the new Axis-backed leadership as nothing more than puppet governments and took up arms. This combined with unresolved border conflicts that rose up again from 100 years ago, and it's safe to say that Africa entered a new phase of bloody conflict, except for the areas that were important to Axis, and under their direct control. And that has been all for part 6 of What If Amuro Got The Alex. It took longer than expected, but I wasn't sure of how to further evolve the story. So rather than just rush it out, I wanted to take my time with this part, and believe me when I say that it paid off. Not only did I manage to write a part that I'm feeling really good about, but I now also have a clear idea of how to continue the story to the end. So if all goes well, the next part shouldn't take nearly as long as this one. So soon you'll be able to join me for part 7, where the true titans begin their conquest of the Americas. A battle that takes place at the same time as Axis's major operations in Africa. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.